<sighs> All right. So uh, just tinkering around in the shop. My uh, 3 8 impact trigger was sticking. And uh, I don't know if you can hear that. It's a little crunchy in there. So I've been trying to work it off. Uh, trying to get it freed up. But I got to get the button off. And it's kind of frozen on there. So I'm trying to work this in and try to wear it out. But uh, yeah, that's what I've been tinkering with today. Um, got the Ranger inspected. I uh, got to figure out the speedometer right now. I uh, got to get the uh, drive shaft off of it. That's been, that's why I need the impact is get that off. Um, yeah, so lost about three hours of footage of the repairing my trailer, which sucks. Had some good footage of me on the tractor trying to park it and whatnot. All the wizardry involved in that. But so here's the trailer. So we got a 3 8 plate welded in at max amps. Uh, got my hooks for my breakaway. And then this is welded all the way up around, welded in the, welded in here because I got my jack over here. So I just welded that solid. There's another piece of plate under there. 3 8 plate all the way down here. It's welded from basically almost all the way around. I would have got, I should have gotten here, but I just, it's only this little section. So not too worried about it. And then I welded up under here as much as I could. I also have more plate on the front of this, locking it down. So there's that. I got trailer brakes and the breakaway to put back on it. Uh, we've oiled up the tractor the other time. Just checked on everything, checked all the fluids and struggled with starting and this battery cable's toast. You can see by the chips and knocks on it, but it'll, uh, it's not tight enough, so. Tractor needs battery cables eventually. I moved a bunch of stuff around. I'm gonna get back on the go-karts here soon. I'll get this in the shop eventually. I gotta put the oil pickup back on it, it fell off. Galaxy's still doing good. The, uh, Got the axle under the truck. I gotta order blocks to go in there. I don't wanna put blocks, but these ones are pretty cool, pretty cool, so I'll show you guys when I get it. Gotta finish up the front axle. Gotta tear this down. The reason I'm gonna tear it down is I'm gonna switch over to a roller cam because I'm afraid of that flat tappet going out. <clears throat> so here's the uh model A. Haven't touched it in a little bit. Gotta figure out the uh Front suspension, how I want to do it. Uh, I'm going to trim. Trim in here. To clearance this uh, leaf spring. And then the radius arms, it's kind of just tacked on there right now. Just trying to figure it out. But my caster would be almost neutral. And I don't want that. So I'm probably going to have to notch here. And then bend these up which it's not a big deal. Uh, these are pretty, pretty sturdy. Uh, tried flipping them over and it just didn't work out with the spring geometry. So just trying to figure it out right now. Uh, I may try and weld in a tab here on this so I can bring up a coil over. And then uh, from that corner over to here, right over here I might try and build a track bar keep this thing straight we'll see how that goes but yeah I mean it's coming along been cleaning this place up a little bit here and there I got three quads I gotta get uh, these two have no spark they're fresh harnesses and I'll go into diagnosing that once we get on them this one runs it's got a fuel tank leak and I'm gonna make a uh, a new section here. It's gonna be uh, probably diamond plate because it's easy. 
just trim up this original part and just make some fender flares that come up here and uh, kind of spice it up a little bit. But uh, yeah, I'm just going to keep dicking away with this thing. Hopefully get it freed up a little bit. I got to locate my drill. See if I could spin it. Spin it fast enough to get it to uh, work itself in there. Because it's just hanging up. It's not leaking or anything. But uh, i got to free it up so it doesn't stick because it's very annoying when it sticks. Very, very annoying. It's nothing like uh, getting slapped in the head with a socket because you couldn't turn, shut your impact off. How's that look? Can you see? Yeah, you can see enough. And if I could get this all the way apart, which it's fighting me, I would uh, definitely hone the hone the center section out until it fit perfectly, but I can't get it apart. Put some valve lapping compound or something in it and get her honed out. Get this O-ring out of here so I don't hurt it. Uh, come on. Roll pan. So right here, I'm gonna try and chuck it up so I don't hurt it, but I'm gonna hold this section and spin it. And hopefully it'll work itself in there. I've tried lube, intake cleaner, some other stuff. Just trying to get it freed up as best as I can. Uh, I dropped it. Okay, because I'm out of brick clean. Let's see how that oh, that's way better. Let's do it one more time. Better safe than sorry, right? Yeah, there we go. Still not perfect, but this will be way better than what it was. Let's get this 
scroll pin back in. Itty bitty thing. So you see the pin right there? That keeps the trigger from spinning. And uh, when you put it back in the impact, let's not forget the O-ring. There we go. So there's another O-ring in the base down here. And all this is is an air valve. And so. There's a slot right through there. And this roll pin will go through that. And I bent this roll pin on accident, which sucks. Almost knocked it over. I gotta knock this pin out because I put it on upside down. There's a specific orientation to it to keep your trigger from being all crooked and not that it matters, but I don't want to look like a goon with a trigger that's pointing the wrong way. Sitting here worried like I'm going to get judged when I build freaking garbage all day long. Well, fine. Be Rotate it one eighty. Double check. trigger turned well let me get this pin back in I was worried over nothing as per usual if I can find my pin I literally just set it down where did I put it oh where it was safe Might have been wasted time, but I'd rather have it right. I don't have to deal with this again. And they make punches for roll pins, if you were wondering. I'm using a busted drill bit. To 
see my fancy tools are at work. So I'm rolling around with all my extras here. All the goods are what I use at work to build some pretty awesome classic cars. And no, I'm not jank when I'm building. Punch that roll pin back in. Straighten the trigger. Go hook it up there and see how it does. Yeah, no, I take pride in my work at, at work. I just have garbage at home, so. I don't have 4,000 hours here. Get some air pressure in it. Show you my plan for the uh, the Ranger. So this Ranger had a 5R55E, and this is the uh, parking pole slash uh, output shaft speed sensor, and uh, this is the kind of sensor. It's a two-wire magnetic hall effect kind of thing. It's it produces a sine wave and uh, the adapter that I have in the Ranger does not produce a strong enough signal. The Hall effect sensor that I got to try and adapt it. Uh, so this was my other option, but it's a three wire and this is a, or no, it's a variable reluctance. This is a Hall effect. So that creates a square wave speedometer can't read that or the PCM can't read it and uh, this is variable reluctance so I, but you can tell it's magnetic and produces a sine wave AC voltage and uh, the other one produces a DC voltage so I've been trying to figure out a way to convert it and it's just not been uh, strong enough to trigger my speedometer to work so I'm gonna try and pull the drive shaft down and see if I can use that flange to uh, to uh, create the signal that I want and the flange is similar to this and yeah I gotta clean all this up but it's it's a flange yoke like this try and notch it and get a signal from it so uh, when this compressor fills up, I'll come back and we'll go from there. Maybe start the Harley. All right, now it's filled up. Seems to work pretty good. So I'm going to get set up and uh, get this drive shaft off and uh, see about pulling that yoke. See what I can do there. I'm still debating on how I'm going to maintain balance but also uh get the signal that i want so i'll come back when i'm ready to pull it and you guys will check it out all right so 12 millimeter 12 point usually want to use an impact socket or impact swivel and they do make uh drive shaft sockets but up here you got one two three and four Sometimes you can get them tall, get them, get to all of them without spinning it, but sometimes you have to spin it, so we'll see. Helps if you turn it up to five.
Why she sound weak? Ugh. Take the extension out of it. Bash the pin back in because the pin's falling out. Hence the uh, recommendation for an impact swivel. Ah, they're in there good. It's not a bad thing. It sounds so weak. <laughs> Stuck. Of course. Can't win. That's all good. Well, let's see. Oh, come on. Thank you. Let's see if uh, I could sneak one out. See what the issue is. Let's go get the half. Be right back. I'm missing my half to three eighths adapter, which is no surprise. So we're gonna go with the ratchet and hammer approach. moving the whole damn truck. Oh, somebody put these in, right? Dang. Well, that ain't gonna work. Uh, plans F, D, 
through seven. Four. Still too dang big. Ugh. Found a 12 mil for my half, but I don't have a swivel. Yeah, that ain't gonna work. Uh, boxing wrench. Let's try that. is playing 42 of my 700 point plan to fix oh, she's moving slowly come on that okay oh. hey, let's see if it'll Bzzz off there give my big ass head Now, how is that supposed to work? Come on. Well now why can't you just work? 
Huh. Yeah. Only three more to go. That was easy. What are you talking about? And you still can't get that off. Oh, for heaven's sake. Come on. I know I'm abusing this, but come on. You're better than that. It's supposed to be macro grade. Do the thing. Other way. Okay. You're gonna get welded up now. Ah, you suck. Be right back. All right, so we got the bolts out. This one got a little gold, but uh, it's not terrible. They didn't kill my flange. My flange still looks all right. So we'll be good there. Just got to make sure to clean them up and, and then run them down. And so uh, got it all apart. Uh, mule's coming up, but. Be right back. So back to where we were. This was here. Uh, I believe it's a 32 millimeter socket. But anyways, take it, you smack it with a hammer before you impact it. It'll dislodge this washer because this usually gets stuck in there. And that would be on the opposite side of the flange. But uh, you get that unlodged, it'll impact out of there without a problem. It's the nut. And it is a 30 millimeter. And I ground this one down to fit. Uh, inside the flange to where it has some wiggle room. So that you're not binding up on the, the wall of this. Because I have that socket over there, but it's too thick for the, uh, the flange itself. So that's why I have it ground down. And yes, I have spaces on the draft shaft. But that's because I did a... Here, I'll show you. Did at least spring swap on it. I managed to bend one forward, but uh, these are Toyota Tacoma leaf springs and uh, fit all right in there. I have one washer just to space it a little bit. It's metric going into a standard uh, hanger, but you can see right here, this is where the old leaf spring mount would have been. And I just moved it forward. Actually left that rivet in there to guide it. And then stuck it on here, tacked it into place, and then welded it down. And these welds look horrible, but that's just because I didn't I didn't care, honestly. But they're holding up just fine. Um, uh, it actually lifted it up a little bit, which is what I was trying to do. Because I did put a, a lift on the front to... Uh, Keep from rubbing the tires and the fender wells because it was smacking everything so when i get the 37s on it it's back to rubbing again which is normal but let's get to this see how we're gonna pull this off find my my gear it's floating around here somewhere it's on the transfer case that's where it's at Get back. All right, so this guy. So we're gonna have to mimic this to some degree on here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna align it up so that my holes are. Well, I might not be able to, but I want to try and. Uh, mimic this all the way around and see uh see how it turns out and then just grind some flats in it because really it just needs a difference in height like this it doesn't need to be that extreme like look at this one it's an eighth of an inch so it just needs to be able to read a varying voltage signal and this will spin at the same speed as the drive shaft so 
I just need to mimic it. So I'm gonna draw this out and I'll come back when I'm ready to start grinding away. All right, so this is the plan. This, <clears throat> these are gonna be, a, this is a tooth. It's a, a blank tooth, blank tooth, blank tooth, blank tooth, blank tooth, blank tooth. And essentially, every uh, valley is peaks and valleys, so it's peak, valley, peak, valley, peak, valley. And so when this is spinning, it's gonna provide a signal for the sensor. Um, I was messing around here, and this is the parking pole. So these teeth are for park. And uh, these guys are outfit shaft speed sensor. And so I'm going to, it's eight, conveniently, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So conveniently, it matches up with four bolts. So I just need to cut an eighth inch out of the flats and do it somewhat precisely. I don't need this thing going wildly out of balance, but I'm going to do the best I can with the tools I got. So I'm going to get to it. Lock this thing in the vise and make some cuts. High quality vise. Always get the cheapest one. That way it can disappoint you. But anyways, you guys get the point. I'll uh, get set up and I'll come back. Alright, so this is basically what the teeth are going to look like. Done it all the way around. Um, Tried to take a little bit off. Tried not to <clears throat> fully weaken it or go nuts with it, but um, yeah, that was just a this is an attempt. So we're gonna let it cool off. I'm gonna mount it back up and leave the drive shaft off. Make a bracket for the speed sensor and see how uh, see how it reads. If it starts reading how I want it to, then we're we're good. Even if we're off, um, I can adjust tire size in the computer on this one and offset how much we're actually off. So all that in hopes of getting it to function somewhat normally. Hopefully the ABS light will go away. It only comes on after driving over 30 miles an hour. And that's usually because one of the speed sensors didn't read it correctly or it doesn't know how fast it's going. So um, we'll see how that does if not then i'll be hunting down a bad wheel space wheel speed sensor so uh, get back when we're ready to put it on all right so made my bracket it's a piece of angle iron and a piece of one inch flat bar quarter inch uh, and then it's bolted there and it's adjustable back and forth with taking out these washers and so it picks up on these teeth and it's got a decent air gap to where it's reading properly. And I believe it read 20 when I was going about 19. So I'd say that's pretty accurate. I still got to get it on the road and actually consistently test it like at 40 miles an hour just to make sure that it's not spiking to the moon. But it does read it and it does work just fine. So get this drive shaft back in here. And I've been driving it in four-wheel drive because the front's still connected, so just been trying to save myself some effort without having to undo all this and redo it and undo it and redo it, so just left the drive shaft out. But uh, yeah, that's how it's just going to leave it how it is and see how well it works. So get this drive shaft back in and I'll take you guys on a trip with it. All right, so the drive shaft's back in, and the reluctor's reading right there, so should be good. And don't run these; these suck. The only thing, I, the only reason I'm running them is because I don't feel like paying for this drive shaft. I want to use this thing up till it's done, and then I'll get an actual steel one made. That's actually worth something with a proper slip yoke. That's got some compression to it. And uh, 
I'll get rid of the spacers, but don't run the spacers because they're, they're really dumb. They don't have a good concentric. I mean, they fit great, but all in all, they're not worth running. Like on this, I don't, I don't have spacers. I bought a custom flange for this drive shaft. Uh, let me show you it. I know it's rusty now, but it's a custom flange so that I can mount a CV joint all the way down to the front axle. And then the rear is gonna get a similar. It's gonna have a slip yoke. This is gonna be drilled out for a bolt and it's gonna be a slip yoke in with eliminator on this just to alleviate the stress on this. And then it's gonna have a, a flange to the flange back there. So, if you can avoid it, don't run spacers. That's why I still don't have wheels. It's because the wheels I want, either too expensive or out of stock. So, but uh, I'm gonna get this mess of tools cleaned up. And then we're gonna hop in this thing and we're gonna see how accurate it is and uh, go from there. So I started this thing up before I was gonna take the Ranger out. And I smelt some, some gas, but look at that. Fuel pump went out and that might be the, uh, the knocking that I've been here and trying to source where it's at. So uh, that's the next project, the fuel pump on this thing get a decent one but take the one off the big block but I need that one over there so trying to minimize how much I steal from that I already got to buy a starter for it again so get out of here go go I don't have food you guys need to go shoo anyways so new fuel pump got to get that ordered this week Next weekend, toss it on there with a new horn. Take her for a spin. So I'm gonna get back to cleaning up and uh, get this Ranger going. All right, get the GPS up. Stop that right there. See how we do. today.
struggle is real. for this video you guys take it easy i still got abs light unfortunately but i think it's that new wheel hub not putting out the correct signal or good enough signal so so you get it when you buy cheap parts so take it easy guys I really should use this stuff properly you know what I got a use for this. A different use. I'll take that. All of this junk's gonna stay here. We're gonna try the old C clan. See what we can screw up with that. So let me get you unbolted from this and we'll go from there. Oh well, we hit something hard. Hard enough to bend it, but I'll be able to bend this back up and tie the fence to it and keep the dogs in. They wanted to run off. Uh, it's always a pain in the ass. 